Gotcha. Yeah. All right, so before we get started, uh, we put on the website in the consultation form, but we start recording training sessions. Okay. The dog tore his hand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Because he had told me just the other day, he was like, yeah, I sent somebody your way. And then, because um, we had another case similar to yours, and I thought it was that case. Oh, okay. And then, but uh, then, but then when I was looking at your profile, so I'm like, oh, this is just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, again. So, because it's more than just the incident that sure. happened, I think there's things that led up to this. Sure, that's all important. Um, so we rescued him, my wife and I, right before we got married. This was like our first thing we did together, sure. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, we, <laughs> we love our guy. Um, we were in a, a big house in Roscoe Village uh, okay. on a double lot, okay? We got married. My wife got pregnant. She's like, you know, I think we got to get rid of this. We got to work. That's a free kid. Let's go to a condo for, you know, for a year and then buy a There's a big dog park. We were literally right across the street from Sure, the yeah, the corner's a nice part. Um, mm -hmm. So, the dog beach and everything, but like maybe the third or fourth time he got attacked by another dog. Okay. You know, and he greets other dogs well. Mm -hmm. um, actually, prior to that, I had adopted another uh, Catahoula uh, to get him a companion, mm -hmm. and that dog should not have been in the house with another dog mm. even though i socialized them well beforehand and everything and they were fine the minute i brought her home mm. she went just straight into kill mode mm. you know and i i mean it took everything to so she didn't kill him mm -hmm. um so he got beat up pretty bad twice by other dogs okay um but had never really had any um anything with uh, any humans before mm -hmm. um i did notice like in the yard he would bark if kids were kids that weren't on bikes so i mm -hmm. thought maybe he was afraid of the bike mm -hmm. um so we move into this condo and uh you know last year man with all those fireworks and everything mm -hmm. um he basically spent he be he's become like exceedingly paranoid mm -hmm. at all times high strung i i mean it took me a lot of coaxing just to get him here oh. i didn't want to come in the park gotcha you know he'll shut down okay he won't go outside on walks after usually like one o'clock mm -hmm. at all he won't leave the house mm. um and this all started with the whole fire mm -hmm. right um and it's you know and it's not just going outside he's become paranoid over anything mm. any little noise that's not a firework or a gunshot some guy over here was taking his lawnmower out you mm -hmm. know landscaper mm -hmm. just that little noise boom he freaks out mm. right so he's become exceedingly paranoid and high strung which makes it really difficult for me to get some exercise into him mm -hmm. and stimulate him. Mm -hmm. He basically now is at the point where he's all day or in a bedroom. Or in a bedroom. Okay. All day. Sure. Gotcha. Like we can't he'll he used to come and sit with us on the couch and we could pet him and stuff. That's all gone. Okay. If he comes to the couch to hang out with us, it's for two minutes. He hears one little sound and now he's hiding in the bathtub. Gotcha. You know? So he only gets out once a day. Is the only, I mean, to, to use the bathroom. Sure. You know, um, the incident with the kid. So we have a 13 month old. Okay. Um, he's afraid of the baby. Ah. Okay. Um, he'll. It's not like he won't go near her, but he mainly doesn't let her pet him. Uh huh. He typically just runs away. Sure. Um, he's never shown teeth or growled or had his hair stand up or anything like that uh -huh. but there's, we've heard a couple rumbles like like maybe he's like agitated like uh -huh. you know sure um he's i think barked at her twice okay okay and we've got another baby on the way ah. and you know so with the incident that happened last uh last sunday or the sunday before last mm -hmm. um we had a family party my parents have three other dogs this is out in the burg um some people rang the doorbell he never has a problem with anybody entering their house or any place. Mm -hmm. He greets people very well. Um, they ring the doorbell. You know, the other dogs get him riled up. They all run to the door. Um, little girl. And then licks her. You know, I guess my buddy that had a, a better view 
of it said that she kind of put her hands up like this then he grabbed her arm mm. you know so it wasn't a nip mm -hmm. i mean it was a bite mm -hmm. you know he wasn't thrashing around or anything but you know he didn't let go for you know maybe like two or three seconds which mm. is kind of an eternity when a yeah oh yeah for sure bit a child yeah, you know yeah, yeah. What i mean um damage wasn't really thank god the damage wasn't really bad you know she had a couple puncture wounds that did break skin mm -hmm. Um, but he didn't like, he wasn't like growling like ah, when he went after her. Mm -hmm. The dad just kind of stuck his hand in his mouth. He let go and then he just walked away like nothing happened. Like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. You know, so he didn't go into that like, I'm gonna kill you. Mm -hmm. You know, he also didn't growl or give any warning sign before it happened. Mm -hmm. It was just quick. He just grabbed her mm -hmm. and then yanked on her and then it was done. He walked away, blood dripping from his mouth like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And we were just completely, you know, um, shocked, mm -hmm. right? He'd never bit a person before, mm -hmm. never tried to, mm -hmm. never nipped, nothing. Um, so now, you know, now my parents are huge dog people, but they've always had a solid rule. Dog goes after kid, out, out, sure. you're home, right? Yeah. And we've got a 13 month old and another baby on the way Yeah. Um, in October. So my wife and I, we're, like, hey, we're, we don't just give up on dogs, but we, we love them. Um, we want to know what your your thoughts are. Do you think that, um, you know, he's, he's safe to be with our kids? You know, if he needs some work, how much work is done? Or your professional opinion, if you think maybe a better situation would be better for him. Mm -hmm. We also don't want us for him to be in a situation where he does something because he's it's not a good environment for him and then all of a sudden he's getting put to sleep by the city sure right yeah. so we also want what's best for him as well right right um so let me get this straight uh so uh the the little girl that was bit how old like seven seven when she pulled away did they uh, did she yell at all i don't i don't believe so no she just jerked back i i think i think so yeah okay she afraid of dogs yeah i it seemed she pulled as if she was afraid of dogs. They yeah, had, I don't think they're from uh, Venezuela. Okay. And I don't think they had had a dog up until like they had just adopted their own dog like two weeks before this happened. It's a little puppy. Uh huh. So maybe a big dog like him, maybe she. She yeah, she it was she her was first. From. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then I had just walked. The girl had just walked in, right? Because he had already been there for a bit. The well, the it was the girl, her two parents, and then another guest. Uh huh. Plus I was there. Okay. You know. And then so they're just coming into the space. Correct. And then, you know, he's sniffing and greeting everybody normally. And then he had sniffed the little girl, licked her elbow, mm -hmm. and then she jerked and then he, he bit. Correct. Okay. Um, when people come over, mm -hmm. uh, do you ever see any kind of tension from him? No. No growling, nothing? Nothing. Just happy to see people? Very happy. Too happy to see people. Okay. Has you ever seen uh, a, a child enter a space before? Yeah, actually, yes, my little cousin. How old? About this. Now he's probably about the same age. Same but age? He's, so Sano's coming up on four. So Sano's probably known him since he was uh, like three. And okay. the kid's probably six or seven now. Okay, gotcha. Uh, how long have you had this guy for? Four years. Four, so since he was a pup? Since he was yeah, about seven, eight weeks old. Okay. Was he ever around kids growing uh, as, as a pup growing up? Just that one kid, my little cousin. Okay, so he's essentially kind of grown up with your little cousin. Yeah, I mean, see him, you know, maybe on a monthly basis. Sure. Um, plus, where we're at in Roscoe Village, lots of families, lots of kids running around. Mm -hmm. You know, saw them on the other side of the fence. But, I mean, we, my wife and I don't necessarily have guests of little kids sure. coming over. Okay, so for, for this guy, uh, he's he's had your uh, the little kid, right, that he's kind of essentially grown up with, seeing once a month on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But all the other kids that he's been around has usually been behind some kind of barrier. And this is, would be the next child he's met, right? Other than your own. Other than our own. And okay. Our own is very small. Correct. Uh, when and you he's started. Afraid of her. When and and um, and with his behavior outside and stuff, this was all in response to fireworks last year. That it's either that or that and the change of environment. Sure. Both happened simultaneously. Where we were at over there by Horner, mm -hmm. the fireworks started about a month after we moved in in April, mm -hmm. and they went from about seven o'clock at night every night of the week till about three in the morning mm. you know like nobody had anything better to do because mm -hmm. everybody was on lock right mm -hmm. um and they didn't stop until august okay and during that night was he like hiding somewhere um he would 
hide in the bathtub. Um, he would occasionally go and try digging through the floor. Mm. He'd go into a corner, try digging through the floor. Mm -hmm. um, but at some point, he would come into uh, the room with us and then either go in his bed or come and hide by us. Sure. Yeah. But he's like paranoid all the time. Gotcha. In response. Uh, in response, and he's also, it's, he's become like high strung, like sure. always, you know? Um, sure. And he make, you know, you can, you know, when you come across a person, you can just catch a high strung vibe off him. Oh yeah. And he'll make a kind of a noise that is just really like, you know, mm -hmm. like you could just tell he's super tense, you know? Yeah. Like, cause here, like, I mean, he's got some anxiety being here and then like, uh, cause he keeps kind of, he's done this a couple times with targeting his tail and I don't see any, um, any bugs flying around, but the way he goes about it, it's just like over the top. Right. You know, like my dog does the same thing, but it, it looks like you could see, like you said, the energy is a little bit different. Right. Um, when we go back to the whole child thing, um, I think what may have happened is that since he already is high strung and she had entered and he had just licked her, the quick movement, right? Cause this is, this is not uncommon. I've had people in the past where they're like, their, their dog was chasing their kid and they're playing, right? And they're playing chase. And then all of a sudden, like the kid gets spooked because uh, maybe the dog is chasing a little bit too hard or starting to nip mm -hmm. and play, right? Because that's right. what dogs do with each other. They nip and bite each other. Totally. But when the kid gets nipped, now the kid's going in panic mode because kids, the kid's thinking they're being attacked. Right. And they start to scream or whatever. And all of a sudden, prey drive kicks in. Right. And the dog just bites the kid. Right. And the owner's like, it went from complete fun chase to all of a sudden, I'm going to get you. I said, yeah, because you got to recognize your dog is an animal. Right. Right. And it's literally like a switch. Yes. You know, like exactly what you're saying right there is like a, a literal switch, right? Everything was fine, licking, and all of a sudden she jerks and then boom, mm -hmm. right? So in that moment, the only thing that really kind of makes sense, that's why like I have to ask all these questions because right. I'm trying to figure out like, all right, what, what's this guy, like what's the history? And you're like, he's never given us anything other than like what, he, what he's brought up with your child, mm -hmm. right? So, and that kind of plays a factor as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it can be one, High strong people were coming in, uh, licked the little girl, and she moved, and it just triggered that response. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there was no shaking, there was no growling, uh, it was just bite and hold for two to three seconds, and then your friend, but the parent put the puppy mouth, and he just like walked away. It's like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah right. So it, like to me, that's kind of like the dog did it without thinking. Like an impulse. Exactly. Right. So there's that. Uh, there's also, I'm taking in the feedback from your 13 month old that there's already some, uh, there is some kind of um, apprehension of children. Mm -hmm. So when he was approaching and just getting a feel for the situation and she moved too quickly. He was already on guard with her. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe we didn't see something right. because it can be super subtle. It can be a shift of the eye but people don't see it because we're looking for like the hackles, the tail, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're looking for the more obvious stuff, but there's some very tiny little details that can also mm -hmm. be a precursor. And then when she moved, it led to the next thing, mm -hmm. right? So, or it could be a mixture of both, mm -hmm. right? So when it comes to what we can do with this guy and your options and all that stuff is when it comes to dogs and children, I always tell people don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not uncommon. Um, that, more often than not tends to resolve itself because that's people's biggest concern right my dog and my child totally. and i'll tell them the, if you try to put push the whole child petting the dog thing right that's gonna happen. something's gonna happen yes what i do is i tell everybody if your dog is growling at your child you got to correct that and then command space right and they just grow up coexisting mm -hmm. and until the child understands the concept of gentle which is like probably three to four years old, right? right. That's years down the line. Um, they've spent so much time with each other by that, that by that point that almost always there's not a problem, right. okay? And then we can work on that. But then if the dog is any sign of, of discomfort and he like, let's say you brought your child over at four years old to go pet him and then he's like, nah, I'm good. And he walks away, I go, don't push it. Cause he's already telling you, I don't like this, right? Mm -hmm. Avoidance is better than 
fight response, which is right. the bite. And, and that's what we've been, you know, we have been giving them space, mm -hmm. bigger, give them a chance to get used to welcoming her in the pack, yep. right? Right, right. Um, and, you know, we've got a good sized playpen there. Um, since this incident happened, we've even done more space. Mm -hmm. She's going to be out exploring the house. You know, he's in my office with me or mm -hmm. he's in the room, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of where he wants to be anyways, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, so yeah, we, ha we have been doing that. Okay, so now what can happen with that is, is potential um, separation. So what we want is space but coexistence. Right, okay. Okay, so what that would look like is, like this here, just to give you an example, is we teach a dog to go here and they don't move for however long, right? Mm -hmm. So like, let's say we're in the living room, mm -hmm. his bed is off in the corner, he's on it, he can't get off. He can sit, stand, lay down, but he can't get off, right? And you're with your child and you're playing or you're just hanging out watching TV and stuff. Is he still in the social space? Right. But he's away. Right. Okay. Which is different from your wife is with your child in the living room and then he's in the office with you. Vanished off. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Totally. So there has to be coexistence to a degree, but still space. Right. So he's going like, all right, I've hung out with you for four years. Right. I think and I can trust you now. Exactly. Right. right? So that, that's part of it that's one thing um and then the other thing would be like let's say like when the when the baby is like on the i don't know if they're still in the high chair yeah now i i don't have a kid so right. <laughs> i don't know how that works and let's say they're Changes eating their, their food <laughs> and they're dropping food in the ground uh -huh. and this guy's over there picking up food off the ground that's i know a lot of people will would um discourage that when i get a case like this i go i go just be present right. observe Right. right. So then he's thinking, hey, man, when I hang around you, I get good stuff. I get stuff off the ground. Right. right? So now it's a positive association for right. the dog. So then now the dog starts to look forward to seeing the baby in certain contexts. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like little things like that, even though there's still space, you're you're using time to your advantage to get them comfortable. It's all positive. It's positive yeah. time. Positive right. or neutral. Right. OK. So right now I don't worry about, you know, trying to get the baby to touch him or anything like that. That's in time. And then when it's when it's been long enough and you try to do it and, and he'll let you know, like you'll see him come up and then like just lay down next to the baby. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that's him. Done that a couple of times. Yeah. So that's him going, OK, in this context, I'm comfortable. Now, dogs, just so you know, don't like certain energies mm -hmm. um, and loud energy right. or uh, erratic energy, right. which is typically a child between that kind of, totally. you know, you know, yeah. one to three year range or whatever, because they're like not walking correctly and stuff because dogs mature very quickly right puppy by the eight weeks is already romping around mm -hmm. and all that stuff right and then by a year they're considered an adult mm -hmm. whereas for us not until we're 18 yeah. right and then maybe <laughs> exactly so here it's weird for a dog to see an animal mature so slowly mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of like um apprehension can come in okay i've had the sweetest golden retrievers give the exact same behavior a dog is to the owner's own child and they're like, but this is a golden retriever. I'm like, it doesn't matter. And you got to understand, they mature super quickly. Plus, they're like, what? this thing went from not moving to crawling to like walking like this. Like, what's going on here, right? right. But then in time, the dog goes, oh, all right, like you're normal. Yeah. And they kind of, like you said, welcome, in, yeah. welcome them into the pack. It's just one of these delayed humans, like all. <laughs> exactly. Like, man, look at these humans. We can run at, at eight weeks. And these yeah. humans, man, they can't run until they're four. Because when he met the, <laughs> the other child, right, he, he was, was a pup. Yeah. And so that's why I said they essentially kind of grew up together. That's, yeah. So that's why they're like, I would assume there would be no problem because he's known them since the beginning, yeah. right? So all those things in his world make a difference, mm -hmm. okay? So um, when it comes to, well, what are the answers? What, what can we expect, mm -hmm. right? Is one, I want to just assume he has the apprehension of children. Mm -hmm. Just assume that, totally. okay? Um, and it's all about having him under control and then advocating for him, mm -hmm. right? So if you have people coming over and they're gonna bring their own kid, I don't allow them to greet anymore, right? Because people entering a space and him approaching, that's why I asked, does he bark or anything when people come over? And you're like, no, he greets them just fine, right? Mm -hmm. um, is there can still be some kind of territorial mindset, mm -hmm. okay? And if there's a, a wrong move or whatever, because if he's great with adults, then we're not assuming it from adults. But if mm -hmm. we're thinking children, that's where it's going to kick in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it puts you in an advantage because it's, oh, my friend's going to come over and he's bringing his five-year-old kid. I know I'm going to approach this situation much differently 
than if it were just to be my friend and his wife or something. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then you can put him under control. He doesn't greet the kid and we just keep the kid at a, at a distance, okay? Now I do have exercises to help dogs warm up the children, okay. but I cannot make him like them, right? Right. We have things that we can do, but we cannot make it happen. Mm -hmm. It's just like everybody, right? There's things that I like and there's things that I don't like. And like 10 years ago, I didn't like sushi. Mm -hmm. And then my friend was like, hey, try it out. Like try cook sushi because I thought raw was gross. Yeah. And I'm like, that's delicious, right? Yeah. And that opened me up and now I like sushi. Right. But I chose to do that. Right. So same thing for the dog. There's things that we can do to incentivize. There's things that we can do to uh, create positive association, high reward. That's why I said the whole, if the baby's eating type of thing. Mm -hmm. But if ultimately he's like, yeah, I don't like kids because they're loud. We can't do anything about that, right? So that's why I say we have to advocate. Mm -hmm. So advocating would be like your friend's kid comes over and they're like, oh, yeah, he's great with dogs. They're like, oh, it's okay, but our dog, you know, needs his space. Mm -hmm. And then telling that kid, you need to respect this dog's space. He's not like other dogs, mm -hmm. right? So you're addressing the situation that we don't get anything. Does that make sense? Totally. But at the same time, you have to have the control over your dog. Uh, I mean, another easy answer would be like when people come over with kids, you put them in a different room, right? But that just reinforces the isolation of. Totally. As opposed right. to like, okay, you're there, kids over here, we're all coexisting in peace, mm -hmm. we're good. Okay, they're, they're two very different things. And this is typically what happens when, when something like this happens with, with, uh, with the dog. Uh, when I get people whose dog is reactive towards dog, they tend to like go out five o'clock in the morning and they'll go out all these weird times and yeah, like run right. out and then like withdraw, right? Yeah. Or dogs that are territorial, they won't have guests come over. Right. Or if a guest comes over, they'll put the dog in the kennel. Now the dog's barking for three hours, right? They isolate the dog. And I understand why, because yes, it's safer to prevent something from happening, mm -hmm. but it isolates and makes the problem even worse mm -hmm. for the dog, you know? So then it's a balance of having control. Uh, yes, we can push things, but at the same time, we also have to recognize like, if it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. And then we have to advocate for the dog as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a balance of everything. Totally. Um, so, because if it was a real problem, um, with him, I feel like it, he would be targeting. You know, like I get dogs that can't see kids and they'll just start like lunging and barking, mm. you know, because they don't like the energy. Mm -hmm. So like there, there's a very clear discontent. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think yours ha was either situational mm -hmm. or situational. Plus, there's already a little bit of a precursor from at home right. where he's just kind of disgruntled that there's this little yeah. being and right. he's not he's still unsure about it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Plus everything you're telling me, With like he's just always just also high strung. Exactly. Right. So the way I would approach this um, is, have you done any training yourself with this guy? I have, um, you know, so we first, my wife wanted to do the, the whole PetSmart thing. I mean, oh, this, sure, okay, I, I saw I, that. You know, not, you know, I, not great training, right? Mm -hmm. But then I worked with him myself and we had a, a regression um, mm. with him last year mm. with his training. With the behavior and stuff. With the behavior, you know, he just, you know, stopped listening, became more hard headed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was in the regression. I, in my mind, I think it first lined up with the move, mm -hmm. and then with the baby coming in, it's just more so. Mm -hmm. And you know, we haven't been. We've been very mindful of him to let him to not feel neglected. We didn't want him to start to feel jealous of the baby or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've you know continued to try and spend as much time with him as we can. Mm -hmm. But he's made that exceedingly difficult. Sure. You know, by because he's just retreating. Sure. You know, at almost all at all times. Sure. You know. So, and so, uh, I guess if he's in like, because you said that he'll either be in the bathroom or like tucked away, right? But when guests come over, that'll draw him out. Totally. Yeah, he loves guests. And will he stay out during that time? The whole time. Interesting. But then once they leave, he's like, hey, I'm going to my room. Right now, if there was fireworks or something, he would. He would. He would probably make sense. And hide. Okay. But otherwise, the guests, yeah, he's, you know, he. He greets them very well. He allows them to pet him, and you know he has no apprehension of them. Mm -hmm. No barking. If anything, he gets a little too excited. Now he started jumping again, mm -hmm. where we had that, you know, had that taken care of. He didn't jump, mm -hmm. and, you know, out of excitement. Um, now over the past year, after the move and the baby, now he's jumping again. Sure, gotcha. Okay, so um, in my opinion, uh, like getting him to walk out here and stuff, easy. Um, getting him to open up from his withdrawal, I, I don't think it's gonna be too difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely something that we can, we can, I feel we can get done. Mm -hmm. um, the hardest thing would just be the children, right. um, in the sense of uh, we can't make that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really a mix of educating you 
um, you know, making you proactive mm -hmm. so that you can just go like, all right, we're not going to, like you said, set him up to fail in this situation because the consequence is high for him if that happens, right? Um, and then uh, with your own children, it's just being mindful, uh, understanding it's going to take time. You know, like you're 13 months into what I'm, I said, three to four years, mm -hmm. right? And at three to four years, uh, or let's say even just four years, and he's just kind of like, like, I don't like kids. Like, it's just you have a dog that doesn't like kids, right? But then it's raising your children to respect his space, mm -hmm. right? And teaching them like, hey, like, you know. Which uh, is a good lesson because they should respect all the even. Yes, you know, and that's an important thing too because the problem is most people teach their kids like dogs are like they're kind of free play things. And I've had a number of calls from people that are like my dog got my uh, my kid got bit. I'm like, why? They're like, well, they're doing this. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, because you let your kid do this to some random dog, because they do it to your dog, right. and that's why your dog your kid got bit, right? I'm like, that's technically not wrong. Mm -hmm. So, because dogs don't think like we do, right. right? If some kid came up and like smacked me, he was four years old. I wouldn't go like, bam, right? You might want to, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But it's like we don't because right. there's laws and stuff. Right. And we know better, but he doesn't, right? He's just like, what, you're five years old? I don't like you getting in my space. Boom, get away from me, mm -hmm. right? So then that's the tricky part because we don't know because it is so far out in advance. In my experience, more often than not, the dog's fine, mm -hmm. okay? Not to say that it can't happen where he's just indifferent, but we would rather have indifferent than a dog that is like, tar exactly, that's actively targeting the children. Those are two very different things, okay? So I think with this guy, worst case scenario with your children, uh, he might be an indifferent kind of dog, and it's just teaching your kids, like, hey, this is not a dog that you can be that way with, mm -hmm. right? Um, and which is, again, like you said, a good thing. Um, and it's just being proactive. We never leave dogs unattended with children. Right. Um, that is, I've had so many bite stories throughout the years because that happens, and I'm like, well, that's, your, that's on you as a parent. We mm -hmm. don't leave dogs unattended with children. I don't care if it's a golden retriever or whatever. Right. We just don't do that, right. okay? Um, and then you being proactive with the control that you would have of, if your kids are going to be playing and stuff and he doesn't like the energy um and not to say that keeping them in that context is always right you always just want to use your better judgment mm -hmm. right so if he's like sitting there really uncomfortable with the kids like being loud and running around and stuff and you just think to yourself like is this really beneficial to him if he already doesn't like the kids mm -hmm. you can move him and go to your office right right like that to right. me i'll go like yeah that, that sounds like a good call because if he's sitting there and, he, and he's just under stress and all this is happening he's like i gotta do something about this we could potentially put ourselves in a bad situation, mm -hmm. right? So for me, there's no right or wrong, because mm -hmm. I, 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 people like what you said. With, I think it was your, your parents or your, your wife's parents My about parents. like where they're like, oh, like dog beats a kid, role. right? That's yeah. the old school yeah. mindset, right? Where now people are more kind of balanced with. Right. And like, training has come so much further. Exactly. It's like dog psychology and so forth. All that stuff, our understanding and everything has definitely advanced. Um, so knowing all that, when I come in, like a client will tell me, like, why did this? and it worked but i don't know if you would think it was you know correct and i'm like i mean it got the result you wanted so i'm like i don't care mm -hmm. right I'm, I'm all about a good balance of what the dog needs and wants what the owner needs and wants mm -hmm. and it's just like a nice middle ground mm -hmm. okay so the way i would approach this is getting them to walk out here and stuff like i said is the easiest part i think getting them to open up more within the home also should not be a problem biggest thing is just in time how is he going to be with the children mm -hmm. okay um so then here, uh, you know we use remote caller. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have one. I don't know if it's the one that you like or not. Do you know what your brand is? Do you know what you paid for it? Uh, so I got it. I got a good deal on it. I think at PetSmart it was like oh, thirty. You don't want it. Okay. Yeah. I If you buy it at PetSmart, I know what you got. I, I, yeah, then I, I got the last year's model for like 70 Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you don't want <laughs> no. it. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'll explain why. So the PetSmart one, I believe probably has like seven, maybe 10 levels. Uh, maybe there's a few more, but it's was like the Pet Safe brand or something? Or actually, it's Pet Supplies Plus, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, probably um, the same. Probably the same, yeah, same. It's got a, so it's got one that's a beep. Sure. Um, another one that's a buzz. Sure. You know, like it, the vibrate. it vibrates. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the shock. The stim, yeah. Yeah, and we've never actually had to use the shock yet. Okay, the, so. The beep usually, even just showing him the remote and he Cuts stops. it out. Yeah. Okay, so we actually, want to use the stem okay but it's how you use it that matters okay because okay? people always think like well if i shock my dog aren't i going to make it worse i'm like well yeah if you do it incorrectly right which is why we have trainers so here uh the reason why you'd want an appropriate powered collar and professional grade is let's say your collar has seven or ten or even twenty stem levels 
okay? Ours has 127. Okay. The difference is we have a greater range than 20 levels. Mm -hmm. We have 107 more breaks mm -hmm. in that collar. So if he's yelping at 10, but not listening to nine, you're stuck, okay? Right. And you might think, but he listens to the beep. You'd be surprised how different it is when it, you, you use the stem. Because mm -hmm. I've had clients that have had like an e-collar and they'll say like, oh, the dog scared of the, of the vibrate. But when we use the stem, we could be like at 80 and the person's like, holy crap, this is crazy. I'm like, yeah, they're two completely different things to the dog. So with 127 levels, if 40 is too high, I can go down the, and 30 is too low, I can go to 35, 36, right. 34, I can really fine tune it, okay? Right. The other thing is, he's what, like 70, 80 pounds? Yeah, he's, he's now, he's like 80, 88 pounds. 88 pounds, okay. So you definitely want an appropriate output collar mm -hmm. if you're gonna try to override his stress out here, okay? So e collar is a stressor, um, but he's already stressed as when he goes outside as it is. So like when you mentioned earlier, like I had a hard time bringing him into the park, right? Mm -hmm. Is when he goes under stress and he goes, hey, I don't wanna do this. You have to have the appropriate level of power to motivate him that moving forward is what he needs to do as opposed to withdraw. Okay, so, and it, it doesn't make sense to us because you're thinking like, we're gonna make him move forward using discomfort and they go, yes. yes, okay? But it's how we use it, okay? We always start low, we work our way up. So if I'm walking with him, right? And let's say he puts the brakes on. He's like, I'm not moving, Jesse. I'm scared of this park. Mm -hmm. I would lightly pull him 20, 25, 30, 35, and I just keep going up, right? And eventually 60, 65 and he's thinking okay i don't like going into the park because it scares me but this thing that i feel right now is real mm. i can feel it mm. right and it's going up higher the longer i try to hold back eventually 80 boom he walks forward everything turns off mm. so he goes oh and then he's in the park right mm -hmm. and he's thinking okay and you might, you're probably going to see him be very edgy because he's conflicted because he knows i'm going to get remoted but i also know there's like loud bangs here right you're going to see conf uh, him be conflicted but you have to make the brain choose to move forward in order to build its confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, have you ever been skydiving? No. Uh, do you think that's gonna be stressful if you ever did that? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Do you think yeah. you just jump out the plane? No. <laughs> right? I mean, I might, you know, you never know. But it wouldn't but, be an easy decision. But it, it, would, it would probably be similar to the dog. Like, exactly. I just gotta get out of here. Let's get it over with. Right. Yeah. Now, let's say you, you went skydiving every day. Yeah, you get over it faster, totally. right? Whereas, whereas if you go uh, skydiving once a month, slower, or once a year, mm -hmm. right? You're still always gonna have that natural uh, that apprehension, but you have to drill it out. Right. And as you drill it out, now you get more comfortable. Like, oh yeah, I've been skydiving a hundred times. No big deal, yeah. right? Same thing for the dog. Is for whatever reason, you know, he's like, I don't want to go to the park. So you have to override him, but we can't. So if you use food, he's like, I don't care about food, right? Right? I'm, I'm scared of that. Don't exactly. Yep. He needs to think he's making the decision but we have to use pressure to help him do it, mm -hmm. okay? So that's why we always teach a dog how to walk on a leash first, because it helps him learn how the e-collar works, okay. okay? So like for, um, uh, you said Mike, right? Hmm? Was it Mike for, uh, for Dexter? Mike, yep. yeah. Um, they, their issue was resource guarding for yeah. Dexter, right? Yeah, he got tore up pretty good. Yeah, so before that class where we addressed the resource guarding, we had to do heel to teach Dexter how everything works mm -hmm. so that we could then start targeting other things, mm -hmm. okay? And then now it's just a work in progress, okay? Uh, same thing for this guy. First, we have to just teach him how to walk, mm -hmm. right? Get that brain moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then from there, now he knows how it turns on and how it turns off. So if you come into a context where he's like, hey, dad, I don't wanna go, and you start tapping and bumping it, and he's like, okay, I know what's gonna happen, and he pops forward, you just keep walking. Mm -hmm. Everything goes away, so he's like, hey, Whenever I go into flight mode or avoidance, this kicks in, but as soon as I move forward, everything goes away. And the thing that I was scared of is actually not a thing to be scared of. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, so, so you have to help him, but we do it all through pressure, mm -hmm. okay? Now, once we get that done, and he's able to actually walk in places where he wouldn't walk before, you wanna challenge him. I had a client that they had to do a very specific route around their um, building. Uh, they lived in River North, because mm -hmm. their dog was scared of everything. Yeah. First class, uh, to the second class, they were able to start walking their dog outside of the neighborhood. Mm. But, but that was her, she was the same thing. She didn't want to go to new places, right? She'd be very timid. They're like, we can't walk her, otherwise she just like crab walks and plants. Yeah. Yeah. Now she walks anywhere, yeah. right? Okay. Now you can still see her be a little bit apprehensive because that's just her, but, she's got but now she can just move, yeah. exactly. So my theory and thought process is, is, is once we get him over the outside stuff, right? And he's like, oh, I can actually walk and not be scared. 
is it's just our opening them up within the home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we see it's not helping them open up within the home, it's not a problem. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to start using pressure to make hiding in the bathroom or hiding in the closet um, uh, uh, not options anymore. Mm -hmm. So now he's like, okay, when I go in the bathroom, pressure turns on, but when I get out the bathroom, pressure goes away. Mm -hmm. So he's thinking, okay, all right, what if I go to my closet? Pressure turns on, crap, mm -hmm. I can't hide in the closet either, right. right? And it sounds mean, but that's how we have to remove those options mm -hmm. is he has to have some kind of negative until he chooses to pull out and go, okay, I'm not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. What's my other option? And you'll probably, you might see him, he'll be in the living room, panting like crazy, eyes very big, because he's going, I wanna be in the bathroom but I can't be in the bathroom. And he's just, just gotta go through it, mm -hmm. okay? And then once he gets over and he's like, oh crap, like That's I'm out so here and nothing's right. happening. Do you, do you think that the lack of confidence and his, so lack of confidence leading to fear and then both lack of confidence and fear have something to do with his apprehension towards kids? No, uh, because that's, I think that's more so, cause I see it all the time. I got dogs, love everybody, everything, and then, you know, owner comes home with a baby and the dog's growling the first day, you know, and they're like, where the hell did this come from? Right. I'm like, yeah, because it's a completely unknown thing to the dog. They've never been around it or whatever, right? So it's not uncommon for that to happen and the dog be completely stable, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, is it a possibility? Sure. Right, you know. But more often than not, it's usually a completely separate thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, other questions? No, I mean, everything you're saying makes a, makes a whole lot of sense. So... Um, and, and you're, cause the way I approach things is I, is I cover what, if depending on how you approach this, whether you do it yourself or you do like a board and train type option mm -hmm. is, um, if you do it, if it's you and me, I just teach you what you're wanting and needing. Okay. Uh, and I'll give you an idea of like, okay, this is what I expect, what we will need to do. And then you decide, okay, I want that and just that, or I want that and I want more. Okay. So heel has to happen. That's two classes. Okay, that's gonna help him with walking outside. That's not the problem. Uh, him being able to not hide in the home, I don't think it's gonna be a problem either, okay? okay. So he would be the basis for that stuff. So that's two classes. A third class would be based on how is he progressing. If you're like, hey, Jesse, I can walk him around the park. I can take him to Horner Park now. I can take him to a place where he would never go before. Mm -hmm. And you can see where he's kind of anxious, but he's walking, he's doing it. I go, great, we're making progress. How's his behavior inside the house? He's still hiding, okay that would be class three gotcha. okay because now we got to start pulling him out of that if that's going well um, and then the next thing would be um, if you wanted to socialize them with children mm -hmm. okay um, is I have an exercise we use food and all that stuff is definitely you definitely you'd want to muzzle condition prior gotcha. okay because this I was gonna ask that. Yeah. yeah this would make everybody feel so much better that's the, that and that's totally the key right now yeah, yeah. so yeah. muzzle conditioning is very easy okay. um, uh, it's literally just muzzle and food type stuff and you would start that process now okay, okay? don't even worry till you book and stuff like that start that process now okay. okay I get so many people where I tell them muzzle condition your dog and tell them the same thing start it now they sign up for training three months later or whatever now we need the muzzle oh crap we haven't done it no I'll go get one you tell me what to get we'll get it now so Barrio will send you all the information mm -hmm. you can get them on Amazon mm -hmm. the brand that we use is Baskerville it's okay. so like basket, but with an R, Basker, Bill. You want to make sure you get that brand. There are knockoff brands on Amazon. You don't want those. Okay, so Basker, Bill. He's probably a size four to five. Um, clients will sometimes just buy, you know, the, the like a size up and down of what they need because they show you how to measure. Okay. But sometimes the measurements can be a little off. So then if you buy, you know, three, four, and five, and you need five, you would just return three and four. Okay. Okay. But you think he, which size? I think he's probably a four. Yeah, um, but uh, it'll show you. you, you measure the bridge of the nose, you measure the circumference, and you go by that, but sometimes it's still a little off, yeah, okay? Yeah, because the shapes are unique. Yeah, yes, gotcha. and then you can just ask Maria to send you the link to our muzzle videos, okay? okay. So I have a page on my website called Training Resources, okay. and it's got all the e-collars that we use, it got, it's got the prong collars we use and all that stuff, and you'll see a section on muzzles, and it'll say like, I recommend Baskerville, and then it'll have three different videos on muzzle conditioning mm -hmm. for you to watch so you can start that process, okay? okay. So you literally use his food uh, and it, you, you use his muzzle as his bowl and his food like that. And he's eating out the muzzle. That's how we create the, the, the positive association, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. And that's it's super simple, 
You can just start that stuff now. Is it okay? like a cage muzzle or like a? Cold yeah, muzzle? it's a basket muzzle. Okay. So it's 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 so he can breathe. He Perfect. can he can pant. He yeah. can lick uh, or, or drink water. He can he can uh, take can food, all that stuff. Okay. So we would need that, and what I would do is, and we would also need kids, okay, or a kid. And then, um, so the muzzle helps you feel more at, at ease of like, okay, if something happens, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, the muzzle also helps the parents of whoever's going to help us um, so they know that their kid's safe, right? Maybe it would be the kid that he bit. I, I mean, know, we maybe. can. Yeah. I mean, um, and it's very controlled. Okay. It's very controlled. It's very structured, okay? And then it's just all about repetition, okay? okay? So if you're able to do this once a month, you'll make progress potentially, but it's going to be slower. Mm -hmm. If you did it, you know, three times a week, Obviously, that would be much quicker. Mm -hmm. There's no timeline, but um, but just bear that in mind because that also that obviously slows things down, totally. right? So uh, I would jump into that class four because I want you to have this information uh -huh. so you can just right away start spearheading it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if all that's going well and we got it down and you're understanding it and you're like, okay, cool, this is very easy. I know how to do this. It's just a matter of do it. Mm -hmm. uh, class five, we can work on stationary control, which is like I mentioned earlier, like go here and don't get off. Mm -hmm which is very easy to teach. Now it's just a matter of practicing it and applying it. Mm -hmm. um, and then class six um, could be like kind of like an overview. So I have three, six, and nine, three, six, nine and 12 week programs, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I'm putting you in a six class range because I'm just, this is like the bare bones. Two on heel, everything going well with that. Uh, working on the behavior in the home if needed of him like hiding and stuff. Mm -hmm. Class four, how do we socialize this guy with children safely? Uh, class five, working on stationary control. Class six, reviewing everything that we covered, making sure that we got a good grasp on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the bare bones minimum. What are you, what are you doing with 12, uh, the 12 classes? So the nine and 12 gives us more time to either cover behavior if needed mm -hmm. or teach more commands, okay? So there's six commands, sit, stay, down, come, place, heal, okay? Mm -hmm. Heal and the place command are uh, what you're needing from what I'm hearing from you, okay, in your lifestyle so far. But if you're like, hey, Jesse, I want as much control as possible, that's what 12 is for, okay? Now, the variable being his behavior. So like, let's say you do 12, and for whatever reason, we're having a hiccup or something with behavior. Maybe it's like him walking outside. It's more difficult than we thought, okay? I don't think so, but maybe. Mm -hmm. And we spend a number of classes on that, right? So even though we're doing 12, we spent so much time on fixing one thing, we may not cover everything within the 12, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. So then if you did 12, we would cover all the commands. Mm -hmm. So you would have like what I call full control of your dog. We cover all the behavioral stuff. And then I help you progress your obedience to off leash level. Okay. So like Mike is doing 12 with Dexter. Right. And I told him the same thing. I said, uh, behaviorally, that's your variable. But as long as everything's going well with obedience and stuff and the behavior, we just keep progressing. Mm -hmm. And I, I push people toward, or I get them to as close to off-leash reliability as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's like going hiking with your dog, taking your dog to a restaurant, you know, going to a friend's house with your dog, and you can have them just laying down at your feet. So if the kids are running around and he's at your feet, you know, he's gonna stay out of the trouble. If the kid starts running over, hey buddy, you know, please give us some space. Okay, they go off and go play. Mm -hmm. Like you got control, okay? So it's your personal preference. So you're at minimum at six, mm -hmm. nine and 12 just gives you more options, okay? okay? Um, if you did nine, the next thing I'd probably target is recall, which is come when called, mm -hmm. especially if you have a guy that gets kind of flighty and edgy. Yeah. If you were to ever be off leash, you have a means of returning him. 12, we would cover recall plus, you know, sit down and stay. So you're getting the full control. Mm -hmm. And I try to push everything to off leash level. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's pretty easy. It's pretty mm -hmm. straightforward. Um, the other option would be like, um, in your case, um, a board and train option. I, I propose I give this to you just because your case it's not a guy that's like targeting kids right you know so the pros and cons in person with me you learn more mm -hmm. it's all you I'm coaching you to teach your dog you go off and you practice you screw up you come back we help fix it and all that right mm -hmm. so you're learning everything hands-on mm -hmm. con is depending on your availability I'm booked out a couple of months okay okay um, board and train pro we can get you in sooner uh, I think we have a bill availability late this month because we only have four at a time. Okay. Um, uh, so you can get in sooner. Uh, we teach everything. Um, con is the training's tied to us. We have to transfer it to you. So there's follow up with that. Right. Uh, but you can also use your follow up 
to do those things that we can't do, like with the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your follow-up lessons, we can cover whatever you want, okay? Mm -hmm. But the board and train, we can get all the training, all the obedience stuff done. Uh, con would be you don't see how your dog progressed mm -hmm. and why he progressed, mm -hmm. okay? So you don't really get the know-how. Right, and that's, is there, does it ever have it where they listen to you, but then they don't listen to their own? Right, which is why we have the follow-up. Right. So what we do with our boarding trains is we make a video for every week that we have the dog, okay? So like, let's say he's with us for two weeks. Mm -hmm. The first video you're gonna get is the longest. It's about an hour and a half to two hours because it's the first thing that he's learned with e-collar on the, uh, the, the, the first time mm -hmm. because we want you to see your dog learning raw, right? Mm -hmm. if, he, if he gets flighty, if he gets anxious, right? If he gets like frustrated, you see his work through all that stuff because you have to in order to build your dog's confidence, right? So you see it in your video. So it helps you bridge like how did my dog learn? How did my dog make progress and all that stuff? Mm -hmm but it's not the same as hands-on, right? right? And then a lot of clients will just watch the videos because it, it's us essentially training you, but it's over a video mm -hmm. as opposed to in person and you doing it. Mm -hmm. You take your dog and you practice what you learn in the videos. Mm -hmm. You come back a couple weeks later, hey, everything's going great, but we're struggling with this, mm -hmm. right? You would schedule with Enrique and Enrique would help you um, close up that gap. And then okay. you go off and practice some more, okay. right? And then if the next thing's like, hey, we want to work on like, Socializing, socializing our dog with kids. Obedience and control, he's great. Outside, he's great. He's got so much confidence now. We go, awesome. Then we can do a class on um, working with kids, mm -hmm. okay? Even though we didn't cover it within the board and train, it's still something we can cover because it's a follow-up, mm -hmm. okay? okay? So, uh, pros and cons, right? Pro is, um, with me, you learn more. Uh, con is, depending on your availability, it just may be a little bit of a wait. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if we're able to maybe start the muzzle muzzle work in uh -huh. between now and then, mm -hmm. I think, you know, that might be a, an option. You said you don't have uh, any boarding availability till the end of the month? I believe so. I think it's like the second half of a... Very cool. We're going to Hawaii for uh, like 10 days. Sure. This Saturday. So that would have lined up perfect, but okay. Um, I can also... Do you ever get openings? Like somebody cancels or something? I can talk to Enrique. Because so I do all the in-person stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And Enrique handles all the boarding trains and daycare and trains mm -hmm. because I was doing everything at one point and it was just like too much. Too much. So he handles it. I can talk to him because I go by him um, because what takes the most time is the videos. Yeah. So if he's like, no, I got time to make the, do the videos and stuff, then it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I go, yeah, sure. You can bring him on in and then Enrique can start the process mm -hmm. and then we can get him in. Uh, we could get him in as soon as the Saturday because I know two just came in Sunday. And one just came in yesterday. And as long as his videos are done for those three, then everything else is easy peasy. Okay. okay? And if, if, if not, do you ever get cancellations for the in-person yeah. training? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Or, or people will, like, start, like, we had someone start and their dog, like, broke their leg. So then they have to, like, oh, you know, yeah, like, shit happened, yeah. you know? Because um, we would, I, I, we, we would definitely, like, I'd prefer the in-person just because, you know, then it's my wife and I. Yeah. Um, you know, the board and train thing is, you know, I, I would consider just because, again, we're going to be in the, Hawaii. Yeah, the, I've got a buddy of mine coming and staying at our place watching him. Sure. Um, my wife, I know, sent me before. I almost forgot. Um, she just sent me a text with some questions for you. Oh, sure. She's going to be here. <laughs> I mean, I think we covered all this, but I'll ask anyways. That way I could. Sure. I don't have to lie and say I didn't. Would we be able to trust him again with our kids and the kids of other people? Okay, like, so that's so that's that's um, that's the variable, right? Right. That's the hardest thing. It's really when we talk about trust. It's um, we've pushed everything. Mm -hmm. We know where we're at, and then it's you're proactive of like, yeah, you know what? It just seems he doesn't take the kids, and you just have control over him, mm -hmm. raising your kids with respect for him and like just giving him space, because again, he's not targeting children. This was a situation where they were entering, he was there, and the child suddenly moved. So all that, I'm like, yeah, that, I mean, you know, it, there was no growling, there was no rebite, there was no pulling, and then, like, there was no real aggression behind it. It was kind of like he just did it, right? right? Like impulse, you know. Yeah. And these kind of things, they help control his impulse? Yeah, so what happens is, um, think about if he hears a loud bang, right? A lot of dogs okay, uh, might just run off, right? right? If, and my dogs hate fireworks. If my pit heard a firework, you would see her like, you see the response, but then you see her like- Control it. Control it, but then I have to step in to help keep her contained, mm -hmm. okay? So yes, so that's why when we talk about impulse control, when we're dealing with reactivity stuff, um, 
if um, there's a video on my website or my YouTube channel. Okay. Have you seen any of my videos? No. Okay. So if you go to my website, you can email Maria and ask for it as well. It's, it should actually be on your email from her. It'll say check us out on social media and you'll see YouTube. Okay. Click on it. It'll take it to my YouTube channel. Okay. There's a video for a dog. Her name is Lake. Okay. okay. Uh, if you search Lake on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, it's um, it, there's a video where I break down because uh, she came in lunging at everything, me, dogs, and stuff like that. And uh, by the end of the class, she's just sitting there calm. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we got discipline in the brain, and now she's got a bit more impulse control, so she's not like on edge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on my YouTube channel, it's uh, a playlist client and dog training highlights. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Now you should see like, one you like, yeah, yeah. And like, it's got a picture of her face or yeah. whatever. Yep. Yeah. That's the video. Nice nice. So it'll help you get an understanding. Okay. Now she's more of a like quote unquote an extreme case. Okay. But she had dog reactivity, lunging at people, lunging at dogs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And within the class, you see her just calm down. And I show up and she's like lunging and growling at me, right? Because she's still under stress. And then by the end of class, I'm pretty, if I remember correctly, I was making contact with her and I was petting her. Mm. She didn't care. Mm. And the owners were like, why is she not doing anything? I'm like, because now she's calm. Mm -hmm. Now she has, because a passive dog is a thinking dog, mm -hmm. okay? A stimulated dog or a stressed dog is a reactive dog. Right. Because if he already comes out in the environment stressed and it's something, you add another stressor, now we get a bigger situation, mm -hmm. okay? So um, that should help kind of, clarify things for you and your wife totally. but it's unfortunately because it's an animal right i mean even with humans there's no 100 yeah. percent. yeah even with humans there's no 100 yeah, yeah but it's it's a matter of just being proactive you know a lot of people are in the like i just want to like not worry about my dog i'm like that's not how it works right okay right. um other questions oh, yeah. i mean yeah I, you know I, I grew up with dogs i mean so i i knew you know from a very young age respect dogs respect strange dogs especially and you know he I guess the Catahoulas are maybe a little more hard-headed or stubborn. Some people have told me. Is that? I've trained some. I mean, uh, for me, a dog is a dog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my I, before him, I had a beautiful blue pit. Mm -hmm. He got a got lymphoma, mm. and I literally emptied my bank account to try to. It. Yeah. And it, you know, I got a good six months out of him. Sure. You know, and it was high quality of life for him, and then it yeah. was done. I mean, he was just. I mean, he, he was like the perfect dog. Yeah. In every way, and it was. Everything just came real easy. You yeah, know, and I got a blue nose too. They're just, they're, he was great. It, that was Rhino, after Ryan Sandberg from the Cubs. Oh, so, gotcha. Got Rhino, my parents' dogs are all Cubs, you know. Um, uh, so we already covered, um, do we put him, have to put him in a room if we have company? What would it entail for us to give him the right circumstances for him to flourish? I think what she's asking there is, um, what, what are some things so it's been just very difficult for us again to exercise him or to even mm -hmm. play with him mm -hmm. to stimulate him mentally and physically mm -hmm. you know what are some activities once we start to build confidence in him mm -hmm. you know to where even at home like for now in a condo situation probably for the next year mm -hmm. until we buy something that has a nice yard and whatnot mm -hmm. what are some things that we can do within the home that are going to allow him to feel like stimulated so the stimulation actually works against you so this is a very common thing, mm -hmm. is dogs are very simple. Mm -hmm. What he needs is discipline, mm -hmm. a consequence for things, clear structure, mm -hmm. clear expectations, mm -hmm. right? Standards, being held to them. And with that, you're gonna see his lifestyle get better okay. because now you can actually do stuff with them. Right. Because right now you can't walk him. You can't do anything. But once we do the discipline, yeah. right? You're gonna be able to walk him. Right. Right, so like Lake's video, they couldn't walk her because she was going after dogs and people and stuff, right? So like, what do we do with this dog? Now they can walk her. Mm -hmm. Now they can take her to a park and let her off leash because now they're not worried about, is our dog gonna take off and attack the dog? Right. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. So, and in, in the home, people coming over, there's a kid, go over here and don't move. Right. That's actually what helps him, mm -hmm. not the like playing fetch type of thing. That's something you do for you Okay. to make you feel better because it makes us feel good to do these things with our dogs right? right but he doesn't need to play fetch okay. what he needs is food in his belly yeah water in his bowl okay. roof over his head and a place to go potty and he'll be totally happy yeah yeah, okay. Gotcha. yeah. Okay. dogs are simple so 
uh, it, I, I guess a simple way to put it is what you what you would do with this is actually what you you would need to quote unquote him for, for him to flourish because you're advocating for him. Mm -hmm. You're being proactive about things and avoiding situations if you're like, yeah, that's probably that may not turn out to be well, right? A mm -hmm. good decision. But then also like you can walk him now. Mm -hmm. Now it's not like crap. We can't even get him to cross the street or something like that. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, okay. We talked about that. Let's see. And the perfect example of that is actually my girlfriend's dog. My girlfriend's dog was so nervous she wouldn't get out of her car when I met her because she was a former client. And then she stalked me and then coaxed me into dating way, her. <laughs> so her dog, yeah, wouldn't even come out the car, right? And then uh, she couldn't walk her. The only way she would walk her is if other neighbors were walking their dogs, her dog would walk with them. But the moment they left, she would just shut down and want to go home. Mm -hmm. So now she takes her off leash. She, chase, she chases squirrels. She goes to Lincoln Park. She's running around. Her quality of life is so much better now. But, and all we did was just discipline mm -hmm. and helped her over those apprehensions like you're similar to what your dog is dealing with. Mm -hmm. And she's actually on that list of videos. Okay. Uh, her dog's name is Luna. It's a okay. white dog. Okay. okay, so Lake and Luna, those two videos, Luna's very similar to him where you see her not wanting to even come out the car. Right. Okay. And then now she goes everywhere. Nice. Now her quality of life is so much greater. Nice. And she's similar. If people come over, like new people she doesn't know, she's a little bit uneasy. My girlfriend just puts it in place. And then she'll sit there and then when she's ready, you'll see her kind of warm up and then start walking around and like sniffing people and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but it's on like, she takes her own time. She's not a dog that just runs up and is happy go lucky, mm -hmm. you know? And then like, um, is just, uh, it's a more kind of extreme case, but it helps give you an idea of like how the process works. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Let's see. Let me just, uh, finish with this one here. seems like you already answered, I think most of them. Um, how much time, uh, do you think? Um, so she said our hands are getting, you know, full with a one-year-old and the new baby. Yeah, October. that's always tough. How much, uh, you know, afraid that we won't be able to dedicate the time that he deserves from us? Okay, so I often call myself the lazy man's dog trainer because okay. you train as you live your life with your dog. Okay, the concepts are very simple. Mm -hmm. um, when we do training sessions in the sense of like, we're going to teach him to like go here. Mm -hmm. It's literally three to five minutes, one to two mm -hmm. times a day. Okay. But then the component of like, hey, I want to get my dog to stay here and not move. If you're going to sit down and watch TV for two hours, watch a Cubs game. Mm -hmm. Now you're practicing your dog not moving while you're watching the Cubs game. Mm -hmm. You're just doing it as you're just watching TV, mm -hmm. right? So with the way that we train, you, once you learn it, you can just start applying it, mm -hmm. okay? And you might have to commit, you know, 10 to 15 minutes a day to do the exercises. Mm -hmm. But once he learns how to walk on a leash, every time you go for a walk to even go potty, you do your training. Mm -hmm. You know, the one command that will take the most effort is the recall, because you got to go to the park and pop him on a long leash and let, you know, call him back and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that takes people months anyways. Mm -hmm. And there's no timeline to this stuff. It's, you progress at your own speed. The stuff of like the, the kid thing, that one would take time, mm -hmm. right? Because you have to set, you have to set it up like, hey, can, you know, can we, can you come over with your child? And then the muzzle conditioning, of course, is going to take time. So the muzzle conditioning, the uh, socializing with children, and the recall, and if you decide to do more advanced obedience, that would take the most time. Mm -hmm. But there's no timeline anyways. It's just here's what you do, and then you do it mm -hmm. as you have time in life. Does gotcha. that make sense? Gotcha. Yeah. Totally. And that would be like the pro of the board and train is just we get more stuff done in a short period of time, but you still have to do homework regardless. Right. Um, now she's, you know, so the, her last question is, we go to my parents where there are three other dogs, and now going to be four, they just adopted a, oh, okay. my sister just adopted a, a, a black, uh, black shepherd. Gotcha. Um, and that's where he seems to behave less. Oh, um, sure. Is it too much, is it too much going on with that many dogs? He's just being overstimulated, no, right? No, because you can use the e-collar to correct them and calm him down. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's real easy. Okay. It's super easy. Once you understand how all this works. The, the, that's why I do remote collar. It gives people the biggest gray area. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to use and learn. And right off the bat, you get off leash control. Um, the dog doesn't know where it's coming from, so there's no conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the 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 psychology behind it because people think they're electrocuting their dogs. But right. I'm like, that's not how it works. Right. But yeah, no, that's actually the easiest thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And if uh, and I'll go film my wife. And if my wife wanted to. Have, call you to have a quick conversation mm -hmm. would you be open to that uh, it depends just because i'm booked all the time right um 
Or if she sent you an email or something. She can send an email with questions. Uh, I'll try to get this up too so she can review this and see that you asked okay, the that'd questions. Be, that, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just knowing my wife, she'll, you know, you know, she'll want, uh, you know, probably to, oh, well, you know, I mean, she works you sure. know, during the day. I work at home. Sure. So I just, uh, seeing the video I think would be helpful for her. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to get this up as soon as possible. You know? Okay. Because um, I do the editing myself. So like I, I'm here with you, then I do my training clients, and I got to run my business stuff, and then I got to do the video oh, bro, editing. I, so that's dude, why I'm. <laughs> I mean, I was lucky to be able to get out here today. Oh know? sure, yeah, yeah. So what do you what do you do? I'm a mortgage banker. Oh gotcha. Just like Mike. Sure. I'm sure, you talk to Mike. Oh. Uh, Dexter, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we work at the Federal Savings Bank. I gotcha. So I mean, our lives. I mean, it's Monday through Sunday. Oh shit, There's yeah. No, like, You're like oh, me. I'm done working. I mean, I get calls. I get a client in Hawaii you know, for sure call me at 11 at night you know yeah yeah it's yeah. just the nature of the business yeah so for I, sure I so you get it so. no for sure yeah yeah if she has any questions she can shoot us an email and as soon as I get this up I'll just forward that to Maria so she can send it to you guys okay and then um yeah you know so in terms of like time and stuff like you can take your time like to do muzzle conditioning you can do in person I'm gonna, stuff we're gonna order the muzzle tonight mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. um you know because that'll also give you know, some immediate comfort in mm -hmm. the house and something that we can start working on with them immediately. Sure. You know, between the boarding and the in-person training, mm -hmm. I'll talk to my wife, see what, what she wants to do. Sure. Um, if she does, if she is open to the boarding, um, if you could let me know. So we're going to be in Hawaii between, uh, from the 7th, so mm -hmm. this weekend, this Saturday, mm -hmm. through the um, 16th. Gotcha. Okay, so sure. That, yeah. And that would be probably ideal on our end anyways. Uh -huh. um, so, okay, I'll talk to Enrique. He comes in today at 2. Okay. And then um, I'll, I'll let him know, see what he thinks. And as long as he says, yeah, I can get it done, then uh, it's not a problem. Saturday would work. And then at minimum, for a case like this, what I would do is two weeks uh, at minimum. The longer he's with us, the more advanced we can take his training. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, so, that, so if you're gone for 10 days, it's just four more days mm -hmm. longer, and then he'd yeah. be done. Yeah. Um, and then you get follow-up with that in-person stuff as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so it would be with Enrique. And if I need to step in to do a class, I don't mind doing that for the, the kids stuff mm -hmm. for you guys. Um, I can set I can set time aside for, you know, that class, not a problem. Um, and then you can always do a mixture of like, okay, you use up your follow-ups. And if you're like, hey, you know, we'd like to like do another session with Enrique, you can do a one-off with him. Like that's okay. not a problem either. Okay. Okay. So there's cool. plenty of options for you. Awesome. No, I, I think it, I mean, I, everything you're saying makes makes a whole lot of sense. And you know, like we just don't want, we don't want to give up on a dog. Sure. You know, yeah. I've always had that philosophy. I mean, I've known people who their dog, tears up their their couch and they're like oh he's gone yeah like come on guys That's i nice. used to volunteer at a humane society in texas mm -hmm. and people would return their dogs for the stupidest stupidest things they like pulls disgusting. too much on the leash or yeah. like oh couldn't get potty trained Those people should never be able to allow to adopt another dog again there should be no like i agree or something i know? think there should be stricter rules around owner dog ownership for sure um because there's a lot of people that shouldn't have a dog that do have a dog okay. you know not even abuse wise just right, like just they, like people i've heard of people their dogs being attacked at a dog park and the person just take their dog and left <laughs> you know like not even like is your dog okay like right. and then just disappeared ghosted yeah and then they're over here with this like five thousand dollar vet bill yeah because their dog got torn up mm -hmm. you know i'm just like it's crazy yep. so yep. but you're, you're responsible it's you're doing your thing you're, uh, you're from texas i'm from florida you're from florida okay yeah i'm from florida i'm from jacksonville